Greetings YouTube, Juan Zarate the Lightbringer here, and today I will be making a video that will go over the mathematics that will be encountered in my future lectures. If you do not know already, I will be making a new uh, physics lecture, perhaps even two videos every week or so. This, these videos will either be lecturing on a certain field of physics, which may vary from kinematics to perhaps even um, high energy physics, or may simply be describing a theorem and we'll be deriving it as well algebraically and with calculus all right so this is simply going to be very brief and very straightforward for mathematics will be the uh, s the essentials of understanding my future lectures if you wish to know calculus for this video we'll only describe um simple straightforward arithmetic to trigonometry if you would like to know calculus, simply watch my 10-minute calculus video, and I hope you can learn from that. All right, let's begin, for time is of the essence. So, of course, it is important that you learn to use symbols rather than numerical values in doing calculations. Letters near the end of the alphabet, such as X, Y, and Z, are used to represent unknown variables. Letters such as A and B and C are used to represent given quantities and problems. Commonly encountered symbols are listed right here. Here we have A is equal to B. Of course, that's one of the most known. Then we move on to one that is red. A is not equal to B. We also move on to A is greater than B. We don't, let's not forget about this one. A is greater than or equal to B. Now let's also go over this one, which is not as common. This one is red. A is much greater than B. Of course, we can go vice versa. Red, sim simply red A is less than B. And of course, you can figure out the rest, although you say I hope so. Alright, so let's move on. Now, let's go into proportions. This one is red. A is proportional proportional to B. This is where we get into constants. Constant of proportionalities. A couple that I can name off the top of my head are Coulomb's constant, numerically being 8.899 times 10 to the power of 9, and Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the power of 934 joule seconds. These will be discussed in future videos. All right, now let's move on to um, this one. This one is red. A is approximately equal to B, and this one, which is one of the least most encountered ones. This is simply red. A is of the order of magnitude of B which it simply means A and B are equal to within a factor of 10 or so. Now let's also go into this one. This one is simply red and factorial. This one is simply calculated via 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 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 the nth term, whatever n is. Now, of course, we're also going to have to know how to represent sums. This right here is simply read the sum of i. Um, x sub i, and this is simply calculated via x sub 1 plus, that's a plus, x sub 2 plus x sub 3 plus dot 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 x, x to the sub nth term, whatever n is. The Greek letter sigma is simply used to represent sums. Of course, this is one of the most used in, when we're talking about sums, which we will be talking about in electrostatics. Now, of course, it is nice, it, we often encounter numbers in scientific notation, so it, perhaps it would be useful to talk about how to multiply um, the powers of tens. So when, whenever we have 10 raised to the mth term, and we want to find the product to that of 10 to the power of the nth term, this is simply 10 to the power of m plus n. Now when we're dividing 10 to the power of n all over 10 to the power of n, this will simply be found via 10 to the power of n minus n. All right. Well, that is used more. That may be used when multiplying numbers in scientific notation. Now, just remember, any number raised to the power of zero is one. All right. Now, of course, we can go into significant digits for that. Maybe you must in most courses, but in this course of mine, significant digits will be ignored. But I will still define them. A significant significant digits are simply values that are known with certainty in a number. In general, when numbers are multiplied or divided. Um, the number of significant digits is, in the answer, equals to the smallest number of significant figures in any of the original factors. When numbers are added or subtracted, the least, the last significant figure in the answer is 
in the last column containing a number that results from a combination of numbers that are all significant. Now, algebra is complex and it may not be described in a short video, so how about we just simply go over dealing with fractions, for physics doesn't tend to encounter fractions. Of course, if we have a over b, and we want to find the product between that of c over d, this will simply be calculated via the product between a and c all over the product of d, b and d. Now, when dividing um, fractions, we actually have some do something else. Here you can see a over b quantity all over c over d. This is simply calculated via a times d all over b over c. The way I remember this is outers, outers over inners, as you can see there. Now let's go on to adding or subtracting fractions. We have a over b plus minus c over d, and this is simply calculated, calculated as a product between a and d plus or minus b c all over b d. Hope you can see that. All right, well then let's go on. Of course, we will be encountering a lot of fractions in physics, so I do, I do understand most students have a fear of fractions. I hope that got your fear of fractions completed or should I say annihilated, annihilated as a high energy physicist would say, okay, let's go on. So we, when talking about algebra, we actually get into factoring an equation. That is separating it into two or more parts that when multiplied together, yield the original function. All right, let's go over common factors. A common factor is simply being described as ax plus ay plus az. Here you can see that the common factor of these is a. So we can simply factor that out using this. Quant a multiplied by the quantity x plus y plus c, the sum of all of them. We also encounter what is known as a perfect square. This is simply described as x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now this may be represented as the product between x plus y and uh, x plus y. Now we also def encounter what is known as a difference of squares. Let's go over them x squared minus y squared may also be represented as the product between the quantity x minus y times x plus y. We also encounter the quadratic formula, but I'm quite sure we all learned that sometime in middle school, so let's go on. Any number can be expressed in the form y, um, y is equal to b to the power of x. Here, x is the logarithm of the number y. b is the base of the logarithm. Two values of b are commonly used. For common logarithms, uh, also called base 10 logarithms, b is simply equal to 10, where y is simply equal to 10 to the power of x, which may also be represented this way. x is equal to the logarithm of y. Okay, so let's go on to another common way to represent b, and that is simply the natural log, where b is simply Euler's constant, a, an irrational number being approximately equal to 2.718, an irrational number. And that is represented this way. y is equal to e to the power of x. And that may also be represented as x is equal to the natural log of y. All right, well then let's move on to, let's move on to um, geometry and trigonometry. Let's simply go over some straightforward facts. The sum of the angles of a triangle is always 180 degrees. This is simply known as the triangle sum theorem. A right triangle, as I represent there, that may, that's horrible, that's better somewhat. A right triangle is an angle, is a triangle, in a, is a triangle that has one angle that is 90 degrees, also said one right angle. As you can see here, that's the, that's the um, right angle. An isosceles triangle has two equal sides. An equilateral triangle has three equal sides, and each angle is 60 degrees. Two triangles are similar if two of their angles are equal. Their sides of two similar, the sides of two similar triangles are proportional to each other in that case at which they are, of that in the case at which they are similar to each other. Now let's simply go over one of the most encountered equations in, in mathematics, the Pythagorean theorem. It, if this right triangle has a hypotenuse that is described by the, the um, has a hypotenuse whose length is c and legs of a and b, where the, they're all just constants, we can represent the 
length of C as being simply being C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Believe it or not, we will be using that a lot in our videos. Now, of course, we also go into trigonometric functions. Suppose I have a right triangle here, and I have this angle here with the same structure that way. We actually know what, what we actually have a function that is simply defined as this thing, angle. We have sine of the angle, and that is simply equal to the side opposite to the, the angle, A, A, and that is simply what you all over C, which is simply the hypotenuse. Now we also have the cosine of the angle, and what is that? What is that? I will show you. Cosine of the angle is simply equal to the side adjacent to theta, which is simply B, all over the hypotenuse, and we have tangent. Tangent is simply... Um, the side opposite to theta, which in this case is b, and side oh, all over side adjacent to theta, and that's b in this case. Now, we encounter relations between these um, trigonometric functions, one of the most common being the Pythagorean theorem that applies to trigonometric functions. That is simply sine squared theta, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is all equal to 1. Now we also define tangent as simply being sine of theta all over cosine of theta. Now let's talk about representing angles, for we will be encountering angles a lot in physics, or at least in my lectures. Now it, a useful way to measure angles is in radians rather than degrees, where 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. Um, it is very useful to know the graphs of the trigonometric functions of sine, cosine, and tangent, perhaps even their inverses. So I will be uploading a future video that which I will be introducing the graphs of the trigonometric functions. Of course, there's also other relations, such as the law of sines and law of cosines when dealing with triangles, and I will be making a future video on that. And of course, there are other useful relationships that relate to trigonometric functions, and I will also be, as you can guess, making a future video on that. Uh, that was essentially it. That was um, the quick overview of mathematics that will be encountered in my future videos. I hope I helped. Um, my next video will be discussing vectors, and it, trust me, it will be a lot better than this. Fortunately, I don't have a whiteboard. I was offered one by a very awesome person, but I denied, for I must purchase it myself. Um, thanks for watching. I hope I helped. As I said, my next video will be discussing vectors. After, hence, afterwards, we will be beginning kinematics, one of my favorite fields of physics. All right, well, I thank you for watching. Farewell.